Okay, so we get our uh, bearing housings. We've got them uh, square, we got them bored, and we got them faced. So now um, there's some uh, additional work. Got to cut a hole through, uh, and then the uh, the lift hole through the end, and then there's a uh, a slit, and then a counterbore and a tapped hole that uh, complete these. And then uh, I'll probably I'm going to round uh, some of these off, but that's kind of the last thing you want to do uh, that chamfering and um, uh, round over and stuff like that. Um, generally, to save that to the last, and uh, then you get a better. Um, you want nice sharp corners and whatnot to pick up on and do things with. But just out of curiosity, you know, we use these toolmakers buttons to kind of put this in the middle of the world here. So one way, and this is actually a fairly sensitive test, is to measure the webbing that's that's left between the, the two sides, right? And that tells us something about the uh, uh, the location of the hole in relation to these flats. <clears throat> so. Actually, I got a new tool not too long ago. I've had this one for years. This is a Sterrett multi-anvil micrometer here, and um, it has some exchangeable tips here. And this is actually really handy because you can, um, um, it's very thin, so you can reach into some little areas and, uh, and measure things. You can take this base off and use it like a, uh, um, a little mini height gauge to measure uh, small steps and um, things like that. Now uh, this is a 0 to 1 inch, uh, roughly 25 millimeters, and uh, um, I, I <laughs> had the need for a larger one. So uh, I bought one off eBay, and this is a 1 to 2 here, okay, 0 to, or excuse me, uh, 25 to 50 millimeters, 1 to 2 inches, and that's the company that was, uh, was selling this. They engraved the hell out of it, but that's okay. I don't mind uh, engraving. It kind of tells the history of the tool. And then there's one of the other anvils that you can put in, which is a round one. Okay. Now in this situation, this is great because we've got a round against a round here, and uh, that's a smaller radius so that we get a good registration. With a flat, you're not gonna, you know, it's gonna touch in two points, and you won't be able to really tell where you are very well. So, and it doesn't give you the actual dimension. So let's go ahead and. Let's go ahead and measure these. And so you got to, in this situation, you got to fish around a little bit so that you know that you're on the the smallest dimension between those two uh, between those two points. And we want, you know, we want to hold it straight too. All right, pull that off. Oh, five and a half thousandths, or excuse me, one inch uh, zero zero five five, something like that. Um, okay, let's do this one here. Wiggle it, wiggle it in. I think I got it. Okay, five. So, uh, one inch. Zero zero um, seven. Okay, about two thousands. Which, okay, so that's two thousands difference between this and this. But what that really means is this is shifted off one thousands. Okay, so you know we move when we move this way a thou. We pick up a thou over here, right? So uh, to get two equal numbers. So this is basically outside of position by one thousandths of an inch. Okay. Um, so that's actually pretty good for not trying very hard and um, um, just you know caliper dimensions on my um, um, planar gauge. God, couldn't remember there for a sec on the planar gauge. Anyway, so that's kind of an example of a, a verification. So it's actually you know a tricky thing to get this dead nuts in the center, um, and if you're boring this in the mill or whatever, and uh, um, getting that number the way you want it so okay so we're gonna go over to the mill and we're gonna cut a hole through there and do some other holes and let's go dig some holes all right so uh, we're gonna gonna use the, uh, the little Noga cool here and a 
rota brooch. So I'll poke through here. And this is just to clear the material out of my way here. Uh, so I don't have to mill so much. So And I'm just, I'm pecking uh, so that the chips are short. Sluggo out of there. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so now um, uh, I'm going to move over and, uh, and do a, a partial hole on the side. And these things don't really care. They'll cut a, a, a partial hole without any problem. So uh, uh, there's Mr. Sluggo. Cool. Now, one thing on these, that little flange is deadly because it's like a tapered razor blade so those are uh, they're pretty evil actually let me clear these chips out of here and I'll do the next hole All right. another half a hole here Mr. Sluggo. You see that's a partial hole. Uh, one nice thing about doing a partial hole is uh, you end up with the uh, the chips break real nice because uh, it's not a full full circular cut. Okay so that's a quick way to, to reduce the amount of milling that you have to do. We've cleared out I don't know a pound and a half of material there uh, uh, pretty easily. So. <laughs> so I discovered another little use for uh, um, this uh, this big um, this big boy Noga holder, so I can mount the little mini cool onto this plate, and I can get it right where I want it. Where this hose is limited length, and there's not a lot of stuff I can snap it onto here to get it real close to the cutter. So uh, with this setup here, I can just 
get it out of the way. And my little cooling, uh, my little cooling thing can go right on there. Now here's one negative here is when you have a magnet and you're doing a lot of steel milling, um, you pick up some goodies there. So, uh, but that's uh, kind of a minor thing. Anyway, another cool use for the sweet Noga stuff. All right. So we are digging out this slot. I'm using a uh, half inch diameter, uh, 13 millimeter uh, fine pitch roughing end mill. And it's one of my kind of go-to tools for this kind of stuff uh, in steel. They're pretty efficient. And it doesn't, uh, <clears throat> uh, low horsepower uh, kind of uh, application, so. Nibble away at this here. The hardest part's the corners, so I gotta I gotta dig at these corners a little bit. So if you try to just bury the end mill in the corner, it's a lot of force. So if you wiggle the opposite axis while you still have some room, you can kind of weasel your way into the corner, so to speak. Now I'm watching my numbers here. I'm just working the X back and forth a little bit. Hopefully you can see that. Let's go up and do this one here. So now I'm advancing the X, but I'm wiggling the Y to kind of clear, clear a path, so to speak. And you can hear it. It just cuts down on the contact patch of the end mill. It's kind of like a hand uh, trichoidal uh, milling, you know, you're just kind of trying to get a, an even engagement. Alright, so let's go across, let's knock our bumps up. I'm cutting the full inch and seven sixteenths actually, so in case you're wondering. So I'm a little closer to my numbers now. So I'll just keep working that into the into the corners until we get uh, get on size. Get this thing out of here. Do a little deeper on that. Okay, there's the slot. And there's a little chatter in the corners, but uh, uh, I'm not going to stress out over that since uh, this is just a pocket for a, a component, so uh, nothing precision about it. Um, so let's deburr that and then uh, move on to the next thing. Thank you.